Welcome back, everyone. The Cube here. We are here on the New York Stock Exchange balcony, looking down over the floor. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. This is our East Coast location. This is our point of presence, our super node. We're going to connect Silicon Valley and Wall Street, bring the best tech coverage between CNBC and the Cube. No story will be underreported. We're going to get all the action, of course, wall to wall coverage on Wall Street. And no better guest to have than Peter here, the Einstein of Wall Street, who is the legendary trader. Uh, you've probably seen him on covers of magazines, newspapers. Um, he, he, does, he wears his emotion uh, on his sleeve, as they say. And when the market's up, he's excited. When it's down, he's pulling his hair out. But a great guest. Um, got a great podcast. Peter, thanks so much My on theCUBE. And Honored it's great to, to introduce you to the Welcome CUBE community. Welcome to theCUBE, yes. Yeah, we love, we love your style, love your podcast. Um, you do a lot of media. You're, you're a creator. You're, I am, I am and you're a trader. A creator, a creator trader. <laughs> you're a creator Correct. and a trader. So great to have you on. So first Thank of all, you. before we get into some of the podcasts, because I, I want to get into some of the things you talk about, and um, because you do talk, but we had an IPO this morning. Correct. Ingram uh, Micro went public. Um, I was joking with, I wasn't joking, Ian told me over the over the comms when the bell went off, I said, oh, big trade went I know that's the opening trade. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm new, to, I'm new to the exchange. Correct. Um, but this, uh, th you've been here, you've seen a lot of IPOs. Take us through the process, how'd this one go? Um, and then what happens uh, inside the ropes when, when, when things pop? So, you know, look, IPOs are something that we do. First of all, thank you for having me. We're excited to have the Cube here on, on, the, on the exchange, right? We've had a lot of media uh, um, studios here over the years, but this is the newest, the best, and it really brings, it sort of forges the, the, uh, the bridge between Silicon Valley and New York, and so we're thrilled to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, as the ambassador of the New York Stock Exchange, I, I welcome you to... Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard welcomes you to... Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so you've walked the yellow brick road. Anyway, just to jump into it, IPOs are something we do really well here, and it's one of the things that I specialize in over the years. I've been doing IPOs since, obviously, the, the mid-80s. So let's just talk about the process. What differentiates us? Look, companies that go public have a choice. They can go to the New York Stock Exchange or they can go to NASDAQ, right? And obviously, there's no choice because we obviously do, the, we are the best at what we do. The differentiator for those who are sort of laypersons in this thing is we have market makers. So the way the format of the New York Stock Exchange is, on the outside of the room, we have brokerage firms, Morgan Stanley, Wells Fargo, and JP Morgan, connected to trading desks. Yeah. Then we have market makers. Market makers are the people who are flying the plane. Those are people who have been allocated stocks. They're there to put to inject liquidity into the market, put buyers and sellers together. So the IPO process is when a company's done their roadshow. Obviously, we know that. I mean, the best way to talk about it is Apple started in the garage. They came up with an idea. They came up with a product. Then they worked their way around. They did a roadshow they wanted. There are a couple of different reasons companies will go public, either to, to, to cash out or to basically give the opportunity to the public to invest in something that you've got millions and millions of loyal customers of your product, and you really want to get raised capital through a means of going public on the floor of the exchange. So right now, we've had, there have been great heroes in IPOs. There have been hard times in IPOs. One of the ones that really put a taint on the, the market was WeWork, for instance, because there's so much, look, an IPO, the way it's handled, the way it's done, and how it trades, and the environment, the envi investing landscape, it's a new instrument for people to invest in. It's a new yeah. company that's going public. So why did WeWork go bad? What was wrong? What, what tainted, well, what what tainted what the process? What ended up happening with WeWork, there was a big road show uh, with Mr. Weinberg, uh, who had come to the floor many times, and we were talking about an amazing business model. Obviously, the, the idea of public workspaces, the idea seemed perfect for real estate, for individuals trying to find work. But unfortunately, by the end of the road show, when you finally are here on the floor, you're, you're basically you're the, the emperor with no clothes. The, everything that you've been hiding or anything that you've been doing that's not legit comes out into the open as the night of comes to be. And what ended up happening was, I guess uh, Adam was spending most of his money on cocaine and prostitutes, and it turned out that there was nothing backing their valuation. The company was really a shell of some, some really bad behaviors. And so it yeah. ended up being cut out literally hours into the, into the opening bell. And that gave people, look, it's all about trust here wow, on the Wow, I mean, that must have been quite a shock to the system because I know how much I've, from me, what I've seen, the buildup into the IPO is... Correct. It's huge. Huge. It's, it's not huge. The kill, the kill of the day before is like at the altar. That's Correct. Like, and especially because it's 
think about it. It's like it's like having a, the biggest party in the world and then canceling the day of. It's not yeah. something you do and it can look in a market that's based on trust and confidence. Yeah. When you have something happen like that, that is the opposite of confidence, uh, yeah. then it'll affect the whole environment, the IPO market and the environment of the of investing. Right. Because people look, you're you're you. you it's never a sure thing. Trust and is huge. I want to back up for a second. I want to, sure. I'll, we'll continue, but I wanted you to explain the trust and this market making thing, because like, I think to me that jumps out at me as differentiator NYSE is that other exchanges don't have that market making and, and explain why that's important and versus just the freewheeling other versions are out there. Okay. So it, it really, it's an extraordinary process. Um, What's powerful about it is it's like, imagine this, it's you take, you take, you're on a plane, you're a passenger on a plane, I'm the broker, I'm the passenger on the plane. The market maker is the pilot. We take off from New York on a trip across the ocean. Everything is on, or after takeoff, you're on automatic pilot, everything's fine, you run into turbulence, yep. right? The plane starts getting beaten around and you go to the cockpit to ask the pilot what's happening, well, what's going on, and there's nobody there. Right. So it's a matter of somebody's flying the plane. Somebody also has a their job is to create a smooth and active market to inject liquidity into the market. In the old days, when we were trading open outcry auction market here on the floor, you'd walk into a stock and say to the market maker who has been allocated a stock based on how much money they've committed to other companies and how they create a smooth and active market. So the company that gives the, the stock exchange is an allocation process. The company will pick them because of their past track record. Record. And if they have a good track record, when they step in and create liquidity where it's necessary and they keep the stock smooth and active, that's a good market maker. On the other side, versus of it volatility is, where it goes up and then could crash. On NASDAQ, it's strictly electronic. So you open the stock based by, a, by an electronic book that says these are the buy, these are the sell, they match up at a price, and yeah. all bets are off, and it can go up or down without having any guardrails. Right, it's like that ball. You remember when you were a kid? And they you know, I remember in '87 when I was in college, the um, that big crash created the curbs, the flash crash, the, the that, flash that crash, one. because it was just went out of control. Correct. And that then created this idea that okay, we've got to put curbs on things. Correct. Is that is that kind of? I mean, it's, it's actually a really good thing. So think about it. If markets are strictly electronic and there's nobody curating the situation in a market where there's obviously a lot of volatility, the communication highway in the old days yeah. you used to have people who would sit in front of the uh, in front of a courtroom waiting for the story yeah. to blow or somebody, you know, now the information highway is yeah. what runs these things. We can find out about yeah. something happening before yeah. it even happens. So the fact that you have someone at the point uh, boots on the ground, point of entry, who is an, has not an axe to grind, but has a, 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 he keeps everything going smoothly. And so on NASDAQ, what you're going to see now is a lot of the tech stocks went to NASDAQ because of valuations back in the day. We're starting to see a bit of a transition because the New York Stock Exchange has opened up a thing called NICE American, where they're letting in stocks with softer valuations to come and list here. But imagine this, you go to a NASDAQ with a stock, there's nobody really running the show. There's no one injecting liquidity. So where there's an absence of public buying and selling, it's just a so free So it's like for an all. electronic bulletin board then? It's in a free, it becomes a free for all. Free for so all. the stock can go from three to, three to 20 and back to one based on nothing more than there's no public yeah. interest. Here, 7%, the book goes slow. 10% dislocation from the last sale, we stop trading. And then we find out, is there news out? Is there a situation that we need to, was it a fat finger? Okay, and then we try yeah. and give everybody a look. It's so, our fiduciary so, responsibility. So it's, the trust comes into actually kind of not letting perverse behavior come in to manipulate potentially manipulate stocks. A hundred percent. And we, look, we would always hope to think that everybody's a good person, there's a but bad they're not. I cover, there the, are a lot of I cover the cybersecurity here. Let me tell okay. you. So there's there are highly a lot motivated. of rats. There are a lot of rats. You know, I say, you know, people, the, 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 the mouse wants the cheese. Cheese is the money. And you want to go, and the money's here. Yeah. And, and so they'll guess do anything what? to get you know, it. Right. So here, as much as we don't want to over control, there are parameters put on it in the. So what does a market maker yeah. do in the absence of public buying or selling? They step in. Yeah. In the old days, I'd walk into a stock. I'd say I'm a quarter for 100,000. There'd be two buyers next to me. Yeah. We've got three buyers now who want to buy stock for whatever reason. There's a war just started. There's yeah. news out, whatever it is. We ask the market maker who's running the show. Where are the sellers? He'll say there's 200,000 at a quarter. There's 100,000 yeah. at a half. The buyers will say, well, where do you play? 
right? Yeah. He will, so three buyers, two sellers, the market maker will then become yeah. the third seller at a, cho- a price of his choosing, right, to, to facilitate yeah. the trade. The way Wall Street works is we're putting stock on the tape. Yeah. That's our goal. Yeah. So whether it's an absence of a buyer, he becomes yeah. a buyer. Absence of a seller, he becomes a seller. All right, so when was your first trade? Your first trade. Uh, what was your first trade? Okay, my first trade was digital equipment. So the first time I actually, no, it was not. Digital Equipment Corporation? No, yeah, that was DEC, Decalon. No, no, I'll tell you my first trade. Now, you just reminded me of it. So I, there's no training for this job. <laughs> Everybody who works on Wall Street starts as a squad yeah. or a teletypist. So you come down here, you start at the middle, yeah. at the bottom of this cast system. Yeah, those old TVs work, back then hanging it was from a the Quotron machine. It was a static TV set. So imagine this: you start at the bottom as a squad, a runner, become a, a teletypist, you become a clerk an option clerk, retail clerk, institutional clerk, and then your goal is to become a broker. In 1903, they issued 1,366 seats like a taxi medallion. It gives you the right to trade, and the price of a seat has gone up and down based on the economy and the market. So everyone's goal when they came down here was to get a seat. It used to take 13 to 15 years to get a seat because you had to build trust. Yeah. They and had to, and you nobody work your left the job, yeah. right? And no, they, it was the greatest job on earth, so nobody yeah. left. Yeah. I, I got a seat in three and a half years because one guy died, one guy got fired, one guy quit. Yeah, they didn't have the uh, CSI, otherwise we, you might not have I'm that seat. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I got my seat in 1988. I was sent into a stock called McGraw Hill Partners. I, I believe it was. A I know that was Craig co- McCaw. That was a telecom. Uh, wasn't that a tel- cellular company? MHP. MHP. That was Craig McCaw's company, wasn't it? I, I don't even know. I, I was 27 years old, and they they handed me my first order, and they said, "Here's 5,000 shares. Go buy it." Now, back in the day, we had a kind of fraternity-ish, but there was a bit of a hazing process. When you got your seat as a broker, they would, your parents came, you signed the big book. Yeah. It was signed by Alexander Hamilton and, and, and John Paul Getty and, 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 and Carnegie, yeah. all those people. It's like Santa's book. Yeah, like and so it was a big deal. You got <laughs> Just, your badge. Yeah. It's right? an my IPO, badge it's like an IPO. I have my badge. This yeah. is a seat. My number's been 588 for 37 years. So they send me out in the crowd, and everyone knows yeah. Tuckman's got his first order. Let's mess with him. So I go in there, the specialist. <laughs> you had no idea it was coming. Of course not. Yeah. The market maker was a guy named uh, Bobby Corso. Uh, fascinating character, an old, old school Italian guy. He wore th- very thick glasses, and he walked, I walked into the stock. And as you would do with an order, I'd say, hey, Bobby, how is it? And he was, and they had already set this up for me. And he said, yeah. Peter, it's a quarter and a half, 50,000 up. Back then we were trading in eights and quarters, quarters and halves, right? It was not pennies, right? So he said, so what do you want to do? My instructions were, go along. Go along means just don't take the offer. When someone else buys some, you buy a little bit. So I was a little bit hesitant. I was very nervous. So he said, it's a quarter and a half, 50,000 up. I said, okay, I'll bid a quarter. Someone else walked in and said, I'll pay a half or 20000 He said, you bought 20000 I said, well, is there any left for me? No, you now are bidding a half. I said, okay. Then I'm, I'm bidding a half for 25000 Someone walks in, how is it? It's a half, three quarters, 20000 up. Another buyer walks in. He says, how is it? He goes, Peter's a buyer, there's 20 at three quarters. He says, I'll take the 20 at three quarters. I said, how is it now? There's none left at three quarters. You're going to have to pay $25. So I've now walked into the stock. It's trading up half a dollar. I haven't bought a share. So I'm like shaking and I'm going, okay, I'll pay $25 for 50,000 shares. He says, sold. He sold me the stock. By the time I got back to my booth, it was trading three quarters of a dollar lower. So that was my that was my haze, and they realized they oh, got you got me. snookered big I got time. Snookered. I you got, got snookered. snookered big time. So okay, yeah, that's not as bad as kind of getting pummeled. But I mean, that was a, basically a wait. Hey, you you're know what? welcome to the party, pal. Exactly. Exactly. Put on your big boy pants. So what did you do when you got back? You said mm, they got me. I'm not gonna I get did. fooled I next time. I actually got on with the guy. I confronted it as you always do yeah, here. Yeah. First of all, honesty, best policy. Yeah. Tell them what happened. I said I got snookered. I said if you need an adjustment, I'll do it. Back then, you fell on your sword. You yeah, did the right thing. I, I, right. I said, now, I didn't buy them all. I said, you, Steve, lift, you still leave 50000 I'm yeah. going to work it for you. Yeah. He goes, I'll give you one more chance. You were entitled to one mistake yeah. on Wall Street. The second mistake, you're out of here. Yeah, they didn't want to see line, a third. There's a line of people waiting for your job. Oh, I know. So, that's, so that that brings up my next question. First of all, that's a great story. So that, that one strike you're out right. rule is not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not for the faint of heart. No, it's so not. working how, here is not for the faint of I mean, this is a culture. Take us through that Wall Street culture because I think you know it makes people better at their game. You know, knowing I'm sure there's a 
one and a half mulligan option. Yeah, of course if you, if you've yes. proven yourself, okay, he might have had a bad day, but three strikes, you're totally out. But Correct. it's New York, of course. But take us through the pressure. I mean, it makes everyone better. Um, when when do you see somebody say, okay, they're not going to make it? <laughs> we see that a lot. So uh, look, uh, this is yeah. the next to air traffic controller, the most stressful job on earth, apparently. Yeah. That's what it's called. Yeah. And look, we're trading millions and millions and tens and hundreds of millions of dollars on any given day. And basically, you need to know your game. That's why that process yeah. of becoming a teletype as a clerk, building trust with your people yeah. is a big fine point before you get your seat. Okay? You go out into the crowd. It's a matter of relationships. Yeah, yeah. Back in those days, I wasn't sitting behind a cell phone or a computer and sending I out mean, 100 share orders. I was in a crowd with 20 or 30 other brokers. You were competing. Correct. And you, the, the better relationship you had with the market maker and with your fellow brokers, the better it was. So it was almost like, it reminds me of uh, playground, you know, baseball. It's like, okay, Peter's over there. I see him. You're like, yeah, hey, remember us, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, so it was a really much of like the reliability. So, and take me through the process back then too, because there was a lot of legwork you had to do post-trade. I mean, it's not, things weren't computerized as well. So it's like, you had to do the trade. One, you get the nod, right? I'm in. Uh, let's say like an auction. Okay, go sell with Peter, Correct. take that trade. Yep. Then you got to do the follow-up, right? You got the ticket. Was it a manual so let me, ticket? Let me tell you that story. I mean, that's a, I mean what? That's now we got AI. That's it. So what's exciting about that, which people don't talk about. Yeah, I want to hear the story. The way it trades. So it took seven days. So you buy a stock. I bought yeah. I bought ten. I bought 1,000 shares of IBM at $127. I call. I get to one of the phones that they used to have on the floor. I'd say, hey, Bob, you bought 1,000 shares of IBM 125. He calls it into the customer. They hand that piece of paper to a teletypist who inputs it into the system. Then they roll that piece of paper up into a little... Uh, ball and they put it in a mnemonic tube which sends it up stairs to a bunch of women who are up there inputting the ticker tape they put it now in the crowd there was a whole support system around the trade so uh, there's a guy called a reporter nothing to do with media yeah. a reporter was a guy with it with old Ledger. computer cards yeah okay so he wrote down how many shares were bought, who bought them, what their badge number was, what time it happened, how many shares, what stock, what time, and then that would be put into the system. That would also create the ticker tape. Yeah. And then it would go to the back office. It took seven days for that actual cash transaction to be transferred bank to bank. Yeah. Now, the next day, when an active crowd you had what's called a QT, a question trade. I may be trading hundreds of thousands of shares of stock. There may be 30 brokers buying and selling. I'm sure people have all seen those movies of the chaos yeah. from the original Wall Street movie with Michael Douglas yeah. or the Wolf of Wall Street. That, so think about an auction crowd. And not, or it's trading only, places when everyone's... It's, 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 exactly. it's a, <laughs> exactly. Kill or be killed. <laughs> so it's, remember that scene at the end of the day, Mr. Duke? Yeah. We close out all things. So if you did not... First of all, you, your word was your bond. Yeah. That goes back to 1650 yeah. with the buttonwood group yeah. outside. Yeah. Yeah. Then you needed to be able to stand up for your trade. We would always go confirm the trade. I would go back to the other broker's booth and I'd say, remember, Bobby, I bought a thousand for you at 125. He'll go, yes. We would check that off. We'd bring it back into the booth. We had that ledger. Yeah. That the, it's the so there's almost blockchain. like there was like classic two book sets of books. You had the front end. You guys were keeping track here. The lag with the little funnel thing up the tube thing. Correct. You've seen in and then old you had movies. The back office. And that that's a lagging days. And this then there's all this reconciliation going on in the back Correct. end. I mean, what a nightmare! So think Boy, about millions like, and millions of dollars are being traded. Money is never transferred yeah. hands from our point of view. But many days later, money is transferred bank yeah. to bank. Now think about it, in those days, if it took seven days to do that, you may be in an active crowd trading and there would be what's called a question trade. So I, I may yeah. even have this on me, yeah. it's a fun thing. So we used to have a, a yeah, let me, I hope I have it on me. Yeah. So back in the old days when you would have, it's not I mean, here. Anyway, I'll bring it to you another time. Yeah, yeah so we'll back definitely, in the old do, more, days, we'll definitely do more segments if, for sure. If there was a uh, disagreement in a crowd, I thought that I bought, you thought that you sold. I thought I paid a quarter, you thought you sold them at a half. We would have to go back to a governor. We would either go to a five governor panel upstairs or you could do the flip rule. The flip rule was everybody, <laughs> when they got their seat, was given a, go a silver coin, right, which had a bull on one side and a bear on the other. You would call the governor. If you did not want to wait for that five yeah, the, governor panel, yeah, all the that, bureaucracy you just wanted just to get, clear everything yeah, up. If it was I'll, a small discrepancy. I'll flip here, it for you. We'll flip, but you have to live up to the flip. That's cool. I like so they that. They would flip the trade. I just recently made a new coin because in the old days, everybody who got a seat got a coin from the company you worked for. Yeah. And then it kind of went by the wayside. I just created yeah, you gotta the new the, flipping. You got to bring the coin back. For I sure. will. I will bring yeah. the coin back. So, anyway, you'd flip, and whatever way, you'd have to live by the flip. 
That's awesome. And and then now that was just I mean that it was, was just a, a fine tuned machine to do all those trades because the, the the tape and the tapes moving. Right, Constantly. so you have a tape that's moving, so you have all these things being documented. Correct. But this lagging kind of bureaucratic administrative workflow. Yeah. So think about this. For oh a my second. God! Like, a famous, my head's exploding. There's a famous photo that that's going around of, uh, in the archives of the stock exchange. One day that would be a nice trip for you to take. Peter Ash and a woman named Anna Mello upstairs yeah. are in charge of all the archives of the yeah. New York Stock Exchange. They have all that yeah, old Pete's stuff. Pete's cool. I've, I've, You've Pete, met Peter Pete, Ash. I've met Pete, yeah. He's, he's not, I haven't done the tour yet, but he's awesome. The history of this room goes back into the yeah. 1650s when we yeah. traded outside under the buttonwood tree. Then this building was built in 1903, and how slowly one stock after another yeah. was, was gone public. They were allocated to different market makers. When I came here, there were 70 market-making firms. There were five rooms. It was a blue room, expanded blue room. So this room expanded. Nothing as grandiose as this. Yeah. But there was so much yeah. necessity for humans. And it was crowded. Humans, I mean, up, under co up until 9-11, weren't public, al public was allowed to come in and trade? No, but no, no. The public was allowed to be on the balcony seeing the trading down below. Okay. But the public was never allowed to trade. Okay. But we, at one point in the 80s, there were 8,000 people in this room. Brokers, clerks, support staff, reporters everybody so yeah. it was a huge thing going on the room was back-to-back -back people i've seen some old photos i remember you know growing up in new jersey and seeing like photos of this it was packed it was and packed it was chaotic trading but 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 very organized chaos yeah yeah and then you had those old monitors that were like if they fell on someone i think four people would die correct like, so like were, a monster they box quotrons. they were teleprompter quotrons and they were hanging they were from like, like, they're hanging from arms oh my god yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm talking about well, okay of course i do I um, remember it well. all right so let's i mean i love having you on i think you know because it's some time here next guest not going to be on for a while so I mean, this moment, what are the moments, take us through uh, the folks who don't have that historical perspective on, uh, of being on the ground. Yeah, you know, I mentioned 87. Again, I was in college because I, I did a whole thing on high frequency trading at that time. I wrote a paper on it in college um, because the big issue was the speed of communications was kind of screwing things up yeah. in terms of that system was right, a right. fine-tuned orchestrated machine. Yeah, now it's it's now intricate, it's in, in, infiltrated by this new thing called information. Correct. Like, oh my God. This, who's you know, the fastest? There were people who would set up offices closer yeah, to, the, get those to the unit. Correct. And, and ICE is master at this. They got the data center Sequoc yeah. and I think Sequoquas? Ma 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 Mawa, 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 Jersey. Um, so it's all fat pipes now. Okay, I get that. But now... And then you got 87, then you got the, the 90s. What was the best bull? I mean, the 90s was not that bad. The 90s was a good time up until the bubble until burst. The but, bubble. Um, so I've been around for yeah. all of the crashes and crises. I yeah. don't use the word lightly. Yeah. We've literally had a handful of those in, yeah. in history, right? Obviously, I wasn't here for the crash of 29, but I was here for 87. I was a clerk. And that was, for me, the most notable day because we were still in open outcry auction market mode. I was a clerk. I remember, you have to realize that the percentage that stocks were down. I was trading digital equipment as a clerk. It was a $168 stock. It closed at 60 that day. Yeah, it the was a market plummeting. maker had to buy stock, talking about those parameters and yeah, guidelines. Yeah. In the absence of public buying it, the market makers had to buy stock all the way down. Yeah. Many firms went out of business that night. I just mentioned to you that I got here, there were 70 market making yeah. firms, most of them family owned. Guy came down here in the old days, there were the Hendersons, there were the Coens, Irish, yeah. Jewish, and Italian. Yeah, good that was it. Good guys diversity. From, yeah, right. Guys from the neighborhood <laughs> yeah. who started on Wall Street as a squad and they went up, rags to riches, wonderful stories yes. about that. Uh, the guy, there's a guy named Gene German, he was the shoeshine guy who ended up becoming a market maker and a multimillionaire. It's yeah. a great story, <laughs> right? But I love anyway, capitalism. How could you wonderful. not love capitalism? It's wonderful. So the crash of 87 was an extraordinary day. Yeah, that was a bad there day. There was nothing like it. And I think even to date, uh, because there was no uh, uh, technology or uh, back then, everything was done on paper. I had $2 So brokers. you'd say that was the most disruptive to the system because it was 100%. a combination of a crash and then a new normal it was obvious that a this was a that force was majeure that just crushed this is now this is a sea change kind of like the ai moments like we can't do it anymore like this correct it was almost like it's like we're screwed we had never on january 21st in 1987 we had the biggest busiest day in history on wall street 183 million shares the following october was that we had never done these kind yeah. of numbers so you had the numbers the the insanity of that day 
The market was down double digits intraday, and stocks were trading in dollar three, four dollar increments. That inflection point obviously is very notable, and it was great to get that color. Okay, take me what happened next because the next five years was a, essentially a, a re, reconfiguration of workflows. Correct. How did that change your life as a trader? Was it good? Was it hard? Was it a grind? Was it just another day at the office for you? What was you it like? You know what? Things change. It's sort of hard. I don't remember that much of the early nineties. <laughs> yeah, put sorry. it, flush I'm it. Sorry. It's like in baseball I, when the ball goes under your legs. You flush it right up. Hey, move on to the next play. You know, it's remember like, it was the nineties. You know, so I don't remember that. But you know, there was a fascinating time when the internet came along, when Yahoo came out at three dollars and went to four hundred and oh, right back to three. Monster. There was all that time, and there was fascinating to be around the old timers yeah. who were here. Yeah. And there were. I, I, I often tell the story. There was the day that Yahoo crashed after everybody had been walking around like, you know what, that their their P and L was yeah. up big. It all bought it at three. Yeah. It went to four eighty, and then it went. They didn't think it was ever going down. Yeah. It was. It was the early version of going. It's going to the moon, like yeah. like the uh, meme stock phenomenon, right? AMC. It's a two dollar stock. It's going to the moon. Yeah. I said no, it's not. <laughs> but anyway, so that day uh, I was trading convertible arbitrage, which is a different a different field of this business. There's common stock. There's preferred yeah. stock. There's convertible preferred. It's a way of buy of raising capital by a company, offering a higher dividend and whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that was a very little special niche here on the floor. It's almost like derivative trading, but kind of like, or in that same genre. Correct, so 100%. Essentially, you're buying an option for like converting. So what you're doing is you're a buying a pre convertible preferred, you're shorting the common, right? So that you're getting a, a, D, a, a yield, you're getting a Got high it. dividend. You're playing both but you're sides. But you're in every trade, yeah. it's a two-sided trade because you're That's hedging smart. against the common. Yeah. So the other side of that trade is a short, it's called Chineseing. It's you're <laughs> shorting the preferred and buying the common. So you're always yeah. in hedge, you're trading for small bits, but when it works, you're writing four tickets. Yeah. So it was That's kind of lot. like printing money. But anyway, so the day, the day <laughs> until, they, it, yeah, until it ends, the day, okay, we'll come exactly. back to the next question on uh, highs and lows of <laughs> <laughs> the hair up and then the hair looking great. You know, uh, they, you know. they've been through it. So <laughs> Frank Murphy, a bit of a curmudgeon, trader for uh, JJC, it was a market making firm. Uh, the day that Yahoo went belly up. And everyone was bit on a high horse because the 1995 yeah. moment was everyone there never yeah, never the another down day on Wall Street. The internet is a sensation. Yeah, everything's First, up. there were the non-believers. Everyone's then a genius, right? Everyone is a genius yes. until you get punched in the face, <laughs> right? So on that day that the stock went from 480 to three, yeah. and the numbers are probably I'm a little off. Frank was sitting in the back, and he sort of always stood like this, and people were ripping their hair out they, because they had promised their wives yeah. a trip to Disney World, a new yeah. car. Everybody was a millionaire. <laughs> And suddenly they were not billionaires. Yeah. And so I walked over and I love, I'm a people person, yeah. I'm a humanist. Yeah. I love personalities, emotions, yeah. I love to, that's what's so great about this job. When I walked on the floor on March 23rd, 1985, I had just come from West Africa, I was living for two years. I came down here, I had a summer job as a teletypist. My father was a well-known doctor in New York. His patient was a partner at Cowan and Company. And I knew I had arrived. The energy, the adrenaline, yeah. the people was extraordinary. So anyway, and I love to, and you know, we had a rule too that whatever went on from nine to four, you could have been up in someone's face, you could have been fighting out, like short of fisticuffs. Yeah. At the end of the day, it was over. You started fresh. It's like my mother always said. Yeah. What's the definite? The best way to have a great long marriage: never go to bed angry. Yeah. We never went to bed angry here. Yeah. Fresh start. Yeah. Whole to the new day. day. I'm, I'm, everyone's pulling their hair out. They're screaming and yelling. The market's tumbling. And I walk over to Frank because he's just got a smirk on it. I said, how come everyone's freaking in your... And I was 27. I didn't have... I had never bought stock uh, before. I didn't own any of it. And what I did said, he say? why are you smiling? He goes, Pete, I bought Yahoo at 3. I sold it at 10. I bought it at 40. I sold it at 60. I bought it at 100. I sold it at 200. I bought it at 375. I sold it at 430. By the time it went to 480 and back to three, I had made $20 million and I did not care where it went. That gave me that he idea. Of, that's a smart investor. Yeah. I teach day trading now. I have a day trading academy called Wall Street Global Trading Academy. We'll talk about that another time. Yeah, give but the plug what, real quick. What's the URL? WSGTA.com. There's a link in my bio on Instagram, Einstein of Wall Street. We teach technical analysis to thousands of students all over the world. We coach and mentor all our students. We have a boot camp. It's a really wonderful. We started it during COVID when 40 million new traders came into the uh, into the trading space. But what the key thing to learn from a day, I'm sure a lot of your people are day trading, is to 
use a stop order on every trade, protect your downside risk in yeah. a market that goes yeah. up and down. Also, when you take a profit when you can, not when you have to. So the minute you're in a stock and you're up, sell half of your position, ring, no one got broke taking yeah. a profit. It's the same as the tables. Put some chips in your pocket and keep playing with house money. 100%. You know that. Yeah, There's a great absolutely. analogy of the two different kinds of gamblers. The one who walks in with a thousand bucks, he says, I'm going to make a thou, I'm going to walk away from the table, go sell, see Salon Dion, and go get a steak at Ruth Chris, and I'm going to go home. The other one has no plan. Yeah, no he's fun. got the same thousand dollars. He's up three grand. He thinks he's got diamond hands. He starts doubling up on his bets. He's up eight grand. I'm never going to lose my money. The, hot the hand next syndrome. thing you see, he's on. He's sitting, smoking a Lucky Strike, drinking a Hennessy. He's been to the ATM four times, and he's afraid to tell his wife he doesn't have money for the rent. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two sides of the. Yeah, coin. I mean, this is a market. I mean, you lived. I mean, you've lived this, and you continue to do it. You have the people on the high horse all the time, but you get knocked down a lot. 100%. I mean, knock down. You got to get back up. Wall Street. This is not for the faint of heart. It's not. Failure is just. It's like baseball. The ball is going to bounce off your glove. Yeah. You got to let it go. And we learn so much more from failure. What we teach people is to journal every trade. Executing a failing trade correctly is the same as executing a winning trade. Yeah. If you do it the yeah. right way, yeah. it's discipline, consistency. That's how you become a well, good trader. Well, Peter, uh, great, definitely a long form conversation next Love time. That. We yes. almost an hour, but <laughs> we could do two. Um, we're going to bring you back in because what I want to do is get your perspective because you have a unique perspective on not only the history. You're a historian by default because right. you've seen the movie many times. Yes. But we're now coming into this modern era. You're mentoring uh, traders, uh, which is awesome. Uh, that's super cool. But also the world's changed, but the game is still the same. Yeah. There's trades. And so the next question is, okay, AI is this now moment. Like 87, it's an inflection point. I think we're going to see a whole nother ball game coming. We, I mean, wow. We are in so many ways because we've, look, this was a party that was very exclusive that no one was invited to. I, in 1980, was the doorman at Studio 54. I know, it's one of my great years of my life. I know all about the red rope and not being allowed into a party. What happened in, 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 during COVID was what I call the perfect storm, where everybody who had been excluded from this party was suddenly let in through Robinhood, Webull, these free training apps. But not one of these companies had an educational component to their platform. So it was just like, it, yeah. I, did, the I didn't, I didn't tell you if you drank 12, you, I, I let you into my party, but I didn't tell you if you drank 12 vodkas that you were going to get sick yeah, and not those, be able to get home. Those aren't beers. <laughs> exactly. So that is educational. And that's yeah. why I'm still doing what I'm doing is because yeah. it's a matter of what do I do with this great platform I've, yeah. I've built. And I feel the responsibility to those 50 million yeah, new forward. retail traders to teach them yeah. how this works. Well, I don't need to stand at the top of the mountain with a bunch of cash. That does nothing for me. Yeah. But if I'm able to inspire and motivate 40 million young new, they're the future of the investment community. Well, I'll tell you right now, gamers are great traders yeah. because they're just waking up and going, okay, I got to start making some money. To your point about capitalism, your story about the people who came here as market makers, essentially a job, they became, went on to multimillionaires at that time. That's like being a billionaire. Yeah. I mean, look oh, at the guaranteed. money. The, the, if you, Absolutely. If you factor in the, being a millionaire in the 70s and the 60s, 70s, You're 80s, a billionaire. you were essentially today like a billionaire. You were Correct. you were a fat cat, as they say. Yeah. Um, and that's it. that's what this is. Capital is all about. This is the American dream. So now you have an online population who are used to looking at signals right. instead of shooting and capturing the flag. Is that's a trade? Yeah, it is. They're a actually trade. pretty good at it, and they're you doing know? so. Some of them are really good at it. I've been lucky enough to have mentored without even knowing it. I'm going to speak in Dubai in November, and yeah. I'm going to be interviewed by a young guy who's 23. His name is Noor. He started out at 14, hanging out yeah. across the street because he wanted to meet me and I inspired him to be a trader. Okay. He's now gone on to become a multimillionaire trader and he's already giving, paying it forward. He's yeah. already yeah. creating a community to teach yeah. them what I taught him. So there is a, and, but then they're also the bad guys. Yeah, they're well, the ones well who, what's interesting, I mean, we have a little more time. I was just quickly touched this. I think this goes full circle to our, our beginning conversation. The early days here was bounded on trust. Yes. You're starting to have, even digitally, the shared experiences of, of trading, the grind, the risk, the high horse, getting knocked off, getting back on, uh, and then winning. And winning. And then paying back. It's just in different digital forms. Correct. I mean, so someone makes some, so I think that's what you're kind of getting at I, here. This, I am. That culture Derek, of, hey, hard charging. Yeah. We're going to leave our, our emotions at the door. Instead of being a day, it's just the trade. 
hey, you know what, look, there are different, everybody deals with success and failure in different ways, and then there's success and fulfillment. It's a matter of what you do with it. Yeah. There are guys who put on a post a picture on Instagram on the back of a Bugatti with a bunch of stacks of 10,000s, or there are yeah. guys who actually use the platform that they've done and the money they've made to yeah. pay it forward. And to, there are 40 million new people, 80% or more of people who try the day trading game fail. You know what I love about the NYSE? And just to, as someone coming in from the West Coast, I've only been on the West Coast for 25 years, but I kind of grew up in New Jersey and Massachusetts, so I kind of knew about it. Right. I never really was inside the club. But what I know is that people work their ass off. They do. They work hard, yeah. but they play hard. Yeah. The, so you have culture and here. And they're good people. And yeah. they're good people. They know each other. Yeah. And it's a community. Um, we, we need to get that back, that work hard ethic. Yeah. Um, people are still at home, Russia, yeah. are still not yeah. wanting to go. I, mean, I don't get that. I mean, like, how can I mean, you not want to go back to work? Yeah, I mean, you know you what get, it is, though? I always talk about it. You find something you love to do, get yeah, really good at it, yeah. and then that's what you're going to do. Yeah. There are a lot of people unhappy in their jobs, yeah. right? That's one of the other things that yeah. I talk about is to 20 year olds who are yeah. about to embark post college, find something you love to I do. I find this place to be like an amusement park. It's fun. It's the super, we it's, call it. We I call it the Super Bowl. Super Bowl every day. Yeah. I mean, this action going on all the time. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you like is. action, this is the place to be. All right. Final point. I, well, since you're the first time on the Cube and my first time with you on here in your building and your territory, I uh, appreciate your support. Thank you. Um, is I want you to, to talk to the people out there. I talk to a lot of people in California and, and all around the world, and no one really kind of knows the difference between Nasdaq and the NYSE. Right. As people think about going public or I'm a, I'm a CFO. Maybe I'm not. I don't have my best friend you know, in the bag connection for the right. other guys or whatever. There's always that. Everyone has like their favorites. But I, th I think democratization of capital markets is is here. here. It's here. So it's not like oh I have to go here or there because I look like this. I'm a dog. I go here. I'm a cat. I go there. Yeah. This is a new thing. So why is the NYSC the best place to go public? So and you, what's the difference? Thank you for the opportunity to tell that because as the ambassador, I've been here at this point probably longer than most. And I have a wonderful platform that I've turned into one to motivate, educate people. As an ambassador of the New York Stock Exchange, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is what we do different and what we do better. Uh, one quick story, I mean, this was a place where, when I came down here as a young person, it was amazing to see that if someone in the community, right, we were always in high stress mode, yeah. but still, and as I said, what went on from nine to four was over at four. You could have been in a huge argument and have a bad trade with someone at two, at four o'clock you were at Gallagher's having a beer and a steak. Yeah. Okay, at the end, the bottom line is this community was such a philanthropic. If someone was struggling at home with money or whatever, we would literally, there'd be a guy who would grab one of those big rolling yeah. garbage cans. He would put a, 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 a bag in it and walk around the room. Johnny's having trouble here. We're doing a raffle. Somebody would donate something. Yeah. We would raise thousands of dollars on any given day for charities, for people struggling, for whatever. It is yeah. the most giving community. So that's unbelievable. That's, so, that's DNA. It, that's it, like it, in the DNA. 100%. Okay, got that. All right. Now, okay, NASDAQ versus uh, NYSE. In the old days, you need, so it's all about valuation. In the old days, there was NASDAQ. There were two choices. Right, NYSE had capital requirements of 250 million before you could list here. Nasdaq did not have that rule. So when tech started coming into the, yeah, they into had no the place, they had no revenue, so they could not support a listing here. They weren't the IBMs or the cat tractors of the day. So they ended up going to Nasdaq. They what they didn't know was there were no market makers, there were no guidelines. It was a bit of a cowboys and Indians environment. Okay, and it still is. So there's nobody there to support it, to, there's nobody there covering it from a media point of view. When you go public, you now need your loyal customers to become shareholders. You don't want people just to buy your coffee. You want them to love your company and be a loyal enough customer to want to buy a share of Starbucks or Nike or Apple, whatever you're a loyal customer of. So what we're doing now here in the NICE is we are, we are sort of uh, molding and, and we are... Uh, changing the rules a little bit, where we have a thing called NICE American, which is a different opportunity. We've lowered the capital requirements to list here on the floor. What does that offer you? It offers you the branding and marketing of the NYSE. It offers you access to somebody like me that does a lot of wonderful work with startups to try and get them to tell their story and get the new retail community who's looking for an alternative investment to see and hear you. It gives you a market maker who's there to create the smooth the and bar, active market. It lowers the bar but gives you the trust and quality. It allows high uh -huh. quality 
not required numbers, revenue valuation numbers to come in. Correct. You can come in here now through the Nice American and be. So I you're better. You're you're better at servicing. Servicing, better you're better at communications and signage and branding and marketing. You're yeah. better in every respect. Okay, you get to ring an opening bell here or a closing bell. You get to have a market maker who sits, stands over your stock and watches it and injects liquidity in so that it's our fiduciary responsibility. You're making the market. Create, it's called the market. You're making a market. NASDAQ, the stock can open at three, yeah. uh, it can IPO at three, it can go up to five because of the initial bop. It can end up going yeah. down to 30 cents, have a 30 for one reverse split, and it can be out of business within yeah. three months. We yeah. don't want that for a company. Well, times are changing, and I think what's interesting now with the globalization, now you got the American require the American dynamic. I mean, this is like, it's, it's, it's like Hollywood to me. It's like it is, it Super is Bowl. Hollywood. I mean, it this is, is great. I mean, this it place is, is phenomenal. It is. People look We're great. We're so happy that you're here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I love being here. <laughs> I'm personally happy they, because they have to kick me out of this room. I could do a podcast yeah. all day here. I think you know? there's so much we can do together yeah. telling the story. Yeah. Right? We're both storytellers. I appreciate it. Right. You. And to and talk about the history. Well, I want to get the Studio 54. I wanted the rope in the 80s. Studio 54. No wonder why you forgot the 90s. I set that up. I didn't have to say it. You got it. The cube here. Just look, I'm having a lot of fun here. Look, this is the NYSC. They work hard, they play hard, but this is a serious business, serious market, trust, delegation, stock, making the market. It's all part of the process. The Super Bowl, it's the it's the main stage Super of the financial Bowl, markets. It's the center of the financial world of capitalism. Of course, the Cube is here, connecting Silicon Valley, podcast style here at New York. It's wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Wall Street. Giddy up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.